The war on cancer is being fought by many people all over the world. None of those fighters has had a greater influence on the shape of that battle than Peter Noel. Though he had no idea he would become such an influential scientist, he knew at a young age what he wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do research in the human disease. He attended Swarthmore High School, then Wesleyan University, and decided to start his research career by going to the University of Pennsylvania Medical School. It is fun to re remember walking up those front steps in 1948, <laughs> not knowing what the hell I was, uh, medical school was all about. He soon found out and started a career in this very lab that spanned 60 years. I started here in the summer of 1950. I was only here for a couple of years. He left to serve in the Navy in San Francisco, doing research on blood from people exposed to radiation during World War II. He returned to this lab in 1956. In the 1950s, techniques for studying chromosomes were very crude. Noel had an incredible ability to observe details missed by others. It changed the course of cancer research forever. I was looking at leukemic cells from patients with chronic myelogenous leukemia and some of those were dividing I noticed in something like six out of seven cases that in every leukemic case the leukemic cells had an abnormally small chromosome in a pattern he followed his entire career Noel investigated interesting findings with a collaborator David Hungerford who had the tools to help. Then... In 1960, they held in Denver the first international meeting, and they decided if there was an abnormal chromosome, they would name it after the city of origin. That's how they came to call it the Philadelphia One chromosome, uh, was the first real evidence that cancer was the result of a genetic alteration. Before Noel's revolutionary insight, there were two competing theories for how cancers begin. Many people at that time didn't think cancer was due to a genetic alteration, but rather to a change in the characteristics of the microenvironment of the what became the tumor cell. Generations of researchers like David Allman based their research on Noel's insights. I would say they're groundbreaking and fundamental. They, they impact almost everything every biomedical researcher does. Every day, stretches of our chromosomes move around to create a large variety of proteins. When two genes that should not be together accidentally come together, cancers can emerge with characteristics related to the combination. And it turned out the Philadelphia chromosome was a translocation between chromosomes 9 and 22. This has broad implications for the future of cancer treatments. You could begin then to design specific therapies that would attack the abnormal protein produced by the genetic change in the tumor cells and therefore not attack normal cells as standard chemotherapy and radiation do. That's the good news. The bad news was that as people began to look at different tumors to find out what the altered gene was, there are a hundred different kinds of cancer and each one has a different genetic change. For instance, in chronic myelogenous leukemia, the one with the Philadelphia chromosome, there now is a specific drug, Gleevec, which attacks the abnormal protein being produced by the genetic change in the leukemic cells. Noel revolutionized more than cancer research. Early in his career, he discovered a powerful technique for stimulating lymphocytes to grow in the lab with PHA, opening up the field of cellular immunology. This enabled researchers to study the rejection response, paving the way for transplants. He was the first to irradiate bone marrow. His work was the basis for developing human bone marrow transplants. And what kind of mind does it take to find patterns in these smudges? His collection of 300 sterling silver tea strainers provides a clue. I'm a compulsive organizer and record keeper. I keep a book that I have 
written down every tea strainer that I've collected and describe it, describe the marks on it, describe where it was made. Peter is an extremely humble, down-to-earth, um, brilliant man. He's the epitome of what every basic and clinical researcher should strive for. I was very, very lucky. I stumbled over things. I've always said my major collaborators were the princes of Serendip. People were hoping there would be a magic bullet that would <laughs> cure all cancer. It isn't going to happen. I said that I think there'll be plenty to do. The 2010 Benjamin Franklin Medal in Life Science is presented to Peter Noel for the discovery that alterations to chromosomes can cause cancer and further research leading to the development of a therapy that now cures 95% of individuals with chronic myelogenous leukemia.